Here's Paul's final point. We've been building through a series of uh, lessons, a series of lessons. We've got a church in Rome that's filled with Gentiles and Jews, and they're not getting along very well. The Jews and Gentiles are not welcoming each other well. Some eat meat, some don't. Some eat clean, unclean. Some are following the law, some are not. Some are weak, some are strong. They're not getting along very good. There's some issues. Jews are struggling with Gentiles. Gentiles are struggling with Jews. And Paul wants to give them this incredible truth. The truth is that it's God's eternal promise to save an innumerable number of people from every tribe, people group, color, language, every single imaginable division of people on the planet that you can think of, Chinese, Russian, Orthodox, every single wherever, you can't even imagine, Africa, Australia, North America, South America, every single, God's plan is to redeem a group from all those people groups all over the place. What Paul wants these Jewish Christians to understand is that it was never God's plan to shut out the Gentiles. Never God's plan. I, I need you to understand very clearly today that what we do not have in the Bible is God started out with the Jews. That didn't work out so well, so God came up with plan B, which is to switch to the Gentiles. That was not, we don't have a scenario where God planned something. Oh man, that didn't work out so well. Let me pull the first string out and put the second string in. That's not how we should think. Paul wants us to understand this morning that it has always been God's plan to redeem people from every single nationality, every single ethnicity, every single language, every single tribe, that has always been God's plan to do that. And in knowing that, in understanding that, God wants us this morning to receive hope, and encouragement. God wants us to leave these doors with an incredible understanding of what the future holds for believers. That we're going to leave these room, this, this building today and we are going to have been encouraged from the Word of God. So verse number 7, because of this, you guys at Rome, church at Rome, start welcoming each other. Receiving. Start receiving each other. Stop this nonsense. Do the opposite. The best uh, illustration I can use is just imagine, if you will, that we were struggling with being a racially integrated church. And you know there are a lot of churches that struggle with that in Fayetteville, in North uh, Carolina, and abroad. And you will see all white churches, and you will see all black churches. That's not God's plan. Amen. That's not God's plan. God's plan is that for people of all colors to come together and worship Him collectively. But let's say for the sake of discussion that we had blacks sitting on one end of the church, whites sitting on another section of the church, and they would not receive each other very well. This is what he wants to say to us this morning. Did Christ receive you into the kingdom? And the white person would say, yes, he did. And to the black person, did Christ receive you into the kingdom? And the black person would say, yes, he did. And to the Korean, did Christ receive you into the kingdom? And the Korean would say, yes, he did. And the Hispanic would say, did Christ receive you into the kingdom? And the Hispanic would say, yes, he did. Well, if Christ received you into the kingdom, why aren't you receiving each other? That's his argument. That's his argument. It's a glorious argument. It's a gospel-centered argument is what it is. It takes the gospel and it says, hey, you guys, you're not thinking about the gospel. It was never God's plan for any church ever to be segregated. Never, ever God's plan. It's never that way. The plan has always been from the very beginning to redeem people unto God from every single nationality on the planet. Pastor Joe took us to this scripture Tuesday night a week ago, and I want to take us to it again because it's a great scripture, and it reminds us of what Paul's saying in a slightly different way. So would you please turn in your own Bibles to Colossians chapter number 1. Jonathan and Dick Button, I want to say thank you so much for the number of hours that you put into giving us speakers in the ceiling. Um, Many hours dedicated, and, and we appreciate that. 
Can I remind you, if you are a Christian this morning, if you say, Pastor, I am definitely a born-again Christian. I know that Christ has died for my sins, and I am trusting in Him and Him alone. He's my Savior. I am an adopted child of God. These words, uh, listen to these words. Uh, hear these words. Now, if you are not a Christian this morning, and you're still exploring Christianity, and you are wondering about God and wondering about Christians and all this, let me encourage you to hear what he has to say. Verse number 21. And you. Now Paul writes, you, you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked words. Wicked words. That's, that's all of us before we were saved. That's every one of us. You don't recognize that or not, it doesn't matter. That's you. You were alienated from God by the wickedness of your very behavior. In your mind, you were an enemy of God. Sin had separated you from a holy and righteous God. And you that were sometime alienated, enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet, yet, now hath he reconciled. Reconciled. You know what it is when a relationship is reconciled? Sometimes um, um, husbands and wives will file and they'll say irreconcilable differences. That means that they couldn't get along. That means that there was an issue so big that they couldn't live together anymore in marriage. Well, there was an issue so big between you and God that God couldn't let you into his family and you didn't want it to have anything to do with his family. And that issue is sin. And this is what Paul says to us. You were reconciled. Don't forget when you're thinking about shunning the black or shunning the white or shunning the Hispanic or not forgiving your brother or not forgiving your sister. Don't forget about this idea that there was a time when you were alienated from God. You weren't reconciled for God. Don't forget about that. When you're thinking about shunning someone, not welcoming them, they don't dress the way I do. I don't dress the way they do. They're not as good as me. I'm not as good as them. When you're struggling with that integration in the body of Christ, don't forget about the fact that there was a time when you too were alienated from God and you weren't welcomed either. And he says, notice verse number 22. This is how you were reconciled. Get this now. Look at it. This is how God reconciled you. He didn't wave a magic wand. This is how he reconciled you. In the flesh. In the flesh. Someone had to come in flesh for you to be reconciled. That's Christmas, by the way. The incarnation of the Lord Jesus Christ. He came in the flesh. He came to reconcile people. He came in the flesh. That's what we're going to celebrate at Christmas is the coming of God. God in flesh. Verse number 22 continued. In the body of his flesh, through what? Death. You could write the word gospel right over that. The gospel is what has reconciled you. His death, burial, and resurrection. Now continue, please. To, to do what? To present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Wow. Those are glorious words. Those are words of hope. If you are in Christ, you do not have to be afraid of standing before God someday. Because in the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be found holy. You will be found without reproach. You will be found this like he has described you. You moved and I moved and we collectively moved from a state of being sinners, alienated from God, alienated. We didn't seek God. We didn't think about God. We didn't pray to God. We couldn't give a rip about God. And through the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the incarnation, the death, burial, and resurrection, the resurrection redeemed us. He moved us from this state in which we were enemies to a all the way on the other side of the cross, a new state in which he sees us in the righteousness of God. Now, this is precisely why we assemble to worship God. We come together to thank God for so great a salvation. That's why we sing songs that talk about the gospel. 
because we're not supposed to sing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, had a very, that's not what we're here to sing about. That doesn't praise God. We want to praise God for his mercy. Yes, I was singing for just a moment there. I wish I had a blood pressure monitor on Pam right there. It spiked right up right there, you know. We've got doctors and PAs and such in the church. They can handle that. Uh, we don't sing about that. I want to show you in the text in just a minute. He wants us to praise God for his mercy. Yeah. 